नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 56 सिक्स ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन वर्क सिस्टम डिज़ाइन एंड एज ऑल ऑफ यूर वेल अवेयर दैट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन फॉर द लास्ट वीक ऑफ अवर कोर्स एज इट इज़ अ ट्वेल्व वीक कोर्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन फॉर द ट्वेल्थ वीक विद फोकस ऑन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल्स दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड इफ वी जस्ट लुक बैक एट द इलेवेंथ वीक we have discussed the various aspects of ergonomics we have seen the anthropometry or the use of anthropometry for design of a work system then we have seen the man machine system in which we have tried to understand that how the interaction between a man and the physical environment around him affects his performance in any organization we have seen that we need to understand the interface the interaction between the two major components of any work system that is the operator as well as the system in which he is working and on numerous occasions i have given this example that we are recording these lectures so this is also a work system where as an operator i am speaking trying to explain the certain facts and figures or principles and theories with the help of the powerpoint presentation and then we have the environment we have the physical objects we have the video recording cameras we have the lighting arrangement so this is a physical environment in which the work is being done so basically when the work is being done there are two or three important elements so we need to understand from the workers point of view which is a very diverse topic from workers point of view we have to see his skills we have to see how much experience does the worker have his physiological psychological conditions his morale his motivation towards the work so th- there are n number of parameters related to the operator which can be studied in detail but it is not possible to completely understand the behavioral aspects related to the operators so we assume that the operators are coming to the organization so they are motivated they want to work for the organization and when we we are and if we are able to or when we are able to provide them with a good working environment good assistive devices a safe working condition in those cases they will deliver uh, the objectives or they will deliver the output that is desired out of them so we will see that if we can design our physical environment around which the workers have to perform their task it will be helpful for us in improving the productivity of their work or in general the productivity of the organization so we will try to cover different case studies and try to just develop an understanding that if we are focusing on a specific physical thing or a physical object how it has to be designed what are the parameters to be taken into account so that that thing becomes comfortable for example today we are talking of office chair so it becomes comfortable the worker feels happy sitting on the chair and while performing his or her task he enjoys working he enjoys his task and the chair is not creating any unnecessary hindrances or hurdles or hassles for him to perform his task so that is the basic purpose in which a physical object is helping the operator to perform his task in a much more efficient effective and productive manner so our focus primarily will be to understand the design of various physical objects that the worker usually encounters during his work or that he usually interacts with or there is a interface between a worker and the system so we will try to see one or two such systems in this week so the first example that we have taken is the example of an chair or example of a chair why we have selected chair for uh, discussion because it is common uh, we can say equipment or a common device or we can say a common commodity which is used by the workers all across the industry so maybe it is a shop floor there also we will see chairs if it is a banking sector we will see chair in corporate sector also we will see chairs so the design of a chair will just give us an idea the approach that we must follow for designing similar such uh, 
things or similar such commodities. So, let us try to understand the basic aspect of office chair and try to see that what are the parameters or the factors that we must take into account while we are designing a chair which is going to be used by different people in different sets of environment. So, let us try to start our discussion on this topic. So, design of a ergonomically efficient office chair. So, what is the importance? So, we can see an average person makes 53 changes maybe this is documented to his or her torso in an hour. So, in one hour you can see maybe slightly I feel this is on the higher side, but still we can say that when a person is sitting on a chair he keeps on changing or maybe the torso or the body part keeps on moving and in an hour a person makes lot of different positions while sitting on the chair. So, according to this data is according to 2001 study of the desk bound office workers. So, the office workers who are working on the table and desk in those cases or table and chair in those cases this data is important. Now, we can see that when the person has to move around on a chair how it can affect or what can be the consequences of a person continuously sitting on a chair. So, that we will try to understand. First thing is the important thing that the person has to manipulate his torso number of times while sitting on a chair. The design of a chair should be such that it is stable. So, these are the design guidelines. It must be stable yet promote dynamic active natural motion allowing sitting in any position. So, natural motion must be allowed. So, it must be dynamic, dynamic and active. It must be stable also, but it must be dynamic and active so that it allows the natural motions in the sitting in different positions. The chair should support you in whatever position you feel most comfortable. So, here there is a slight disagreement that is creeping in that we may feel most comfortable in a particular position, but that may not be good for a natural posture or may not be a good posture and later on maybe after uh, weeks or after months we may start having some pain or a kind of a symptoms of MSDs which we have already covered uh, musculoskeletal disorders. So, therefore, the chair must support the body in such a way that we maintain a good posture a natural posture which is not going to affect our important biological uh, parts such as tendons or ligaments or they must not get uh, hampered or disturbed or may be damaged due to the wrong posture. So, what I believe as a teacher the chair should support you not in whatever position, but must ensure that we maintain a good posture while sitting on the chair. So, slightly I have a different opinion on this point. It should be simple I agree with this. It should be natural, easy, intuitive and enjoyable to use. So, intuitive we must get an idea how to sit on the chair. It must be pleasurable experience, easy to operate. Suppose it has to be bent or it has to be the backrest has to be made at an inclined angle. It must be easy to operate. It must produce. This is important. Natural posture it must support and it must be simple in design. Now, what we look in an ideal office chair. So, previous slide if you go back is again just giving us an idea the importance of a office chair and next is what we look in an ideal office chair. What is the requirement? There are question marks here. What do we look? It must be based on the latest technologies. Maybe the technologies may be related to the latest anthropometric data may be used for a design of a chair for a particular uh, country or a particular geographical region. And then we can use technologies like the cloth to cover the seat may be designed which is a breathing cloth which gives you a, a kind of a comfort even in muggy conditions. So, 
that can be one of the advancements where the latest technological advancement in the form of the design of a cloth you are using for covering the seat. There can be a number of latest advancements which can be used the selection of materials, selection of manufacturing processes for fabricating the chair. So, we must focus on the latest technologies. Office seating need to go beyond the assumptions and approaches of traditional chairs. So, there are chairs being used for so many years. So, we must look beyond the assumptions and the approaches of the traditional chair. So, we must look for new designs of chairs which may be uh, unconventional in nature, but are very very suitable, very very uh, relaxing, very very comfortable for the workers who are using those chairs. The chair should be wonderfully sophisticated, wonderfully also and sophisticated also. So, maybe it must be using the latest technologies which we have already covered. It must look elegant comfortable this is more important than elegance from my point of view inviting and remarkably simple and nat natural to use this is very very important the chair will support you in all the various activities comprising your day to day work so sometimes the chair must we need to bend also while in the sitting position sometimes we need to get up and then again sit back Sometimes while sitting only we need to reach for a different uh, object or maybe it, it can be a file or something that we are using while sitting on the chair. So, the chair design must ensure that when we are moving the chair helps us in those motions. So, the chair will support you in all the various activities comprising your day work from sitting at a computer to talking on the phone to interacting with others from turning or reaching to bending or stretching. So, while on the sometimes we sit on a chair and we like to relax or stretch. So, there also the chair must support us. So, if we want to bend in a particular direction the chair must support us. So, that is basically the requirements for a ideal chair. Now, this is just a historical overview we can see 1849 the design of a chair modifications 76. 1980 and this is we can say 2010. So, we can see that different types of armrests have been designed, conceptualized, fabricated and used. So, we have different types of chairs which are in use this is 1971. So, it has evolved it in this direction and finally, this is the latest, but this is also approximately 7, 8 years old design. So, if today you go and look for ergonomically designed chair, you may get n number of variants that you can choose from. Now, these are the different postures while working in an office. You can see uh, the worker sitting, sitting in a particular posture, then bending, taking out some files from this table. Then maybe already I have told stretching, relaxing, having a cup of tea, then maybe writing on the lap or you can yourself imagine as we have seen that we do usually photographic evaluation or we do the continuous capture of the images or the videography of the person doing a particular work in a shop floor. Similarly, a person operating a computer in a company, we can do a videography of the person and see what type of postures the person usually makes while he is sitting on the chair. And the chair or the ideal design of the chair must accommodate for all those postures that the person usually makes while sitting for long duration. It is not that we are going for a meeting for 15 minutes and we sit on the chair and we say yes this is the best design of the chair. We have to ensure that a person who has to sit on a chair for maybe 8 hours in a day how the chair must be designed so that he feels comfortable while performing his or her so, it is not a matter of 10-15 minutes because it is a specific case where a person is only going for a meeting. But the long exposure, the prolonged exposure or the prolonged interface between the chair and the operator will definitely have different characteristics as compared to a short time interaction between the two. Therefore, here we can see the operator having different postures different postures on the chair and therefore, the importance of this chair becomes much more. So, here we can see 
this is the kind of a chair that we want to design and you can see the person is changing different postures. Now, we will quickly have a look at the components of the office chair. So, this is one uh, design of a office chair. So, these are the armrest because we will be using these terms. So, we will just have a glimpse of that. This is the headrest, armrest, seat, this is the seat. Then there is a height control knob here and then the five, ma five arm stand rotating wheels here you can see. So, these are some of the parts, there can be other parts also one is here the I have left this is the back rest. So, these are all the components of a office chair or the parts of an office chair and we need to design each one of them. So, the design for each one of them will require a basic understanding of the various principles that we have already covered. For example, this suppose we drop a vertical from here, what must be this angle theta, whether it must be adjustable, if it is adjustable up to what height or what angle it must go. So, that is one thing. We have to decide what is this thickness or x, what has to be this length between the backrest and the top uh, the front part of the chair. So, what, what has to be this height? All these parameters have to be decided. Now, how we will decide these parameters? As engineers or as managers or as scientists, it is our duty to design good equipment for our workers. Now, suppose the chair has to be designed. How we will decide these parameters? This height is there, this angle theta is there, then this height is also equally important. Then whether to go for a 5 arm stand or 3 arm stand that is also very, very important. Whether we need to give the adjustable height or it can be a common height that is also important that is also equally important. So, one by one we will try to understand most of these parameters. So, what is seat? Now, this is a seat, there is a adjusting knob here. So, seat height, seat height should be pneumatically adjusted while seated. So, we must be able to control the height of the seat. A range of 16 to 20.5 inches of the floor should accommodate most user. So, this is an important guideline for the height of the chair. A range of 16 to 20.5 inches of the floor should accommodate most users. Feet flat on the floor or on a footrest range 347 to 525 millimeter. So, this is we have to ensure that the feet are flat while we are sitting on this seat. So, seat must be such that the feet are flat on the floor or on a footrest. Now, coming on to the seat material, there are different types and just I will go back to this, the design of a seat. There are other parameters also that we need to look for, where one can be this width, then this dimension also, then this, uh, this angle also is important as particular uh, to the horizontal. So, all these parameters are very, very important and we will see if possible to cover some of these in our subsequent slides or what are the guidelines related to the angle of the seat or the curvature of the seat we will try to cover. But important point is that when we are designing ergonomic chair, seat is one of the most important parameters that must be given due consideration. And for seat, the seat material also is very, very important. It can be made up of leather, it can be a wire mesh, it can be a cushion or normally we have a uh, cushion covered by a cloth, then again this is again an example of a leather. So, we have different types of materials that are available when we are designing a chair for the office going professionals. So, we can choose now different types of materials will have their pros and cons. 
leather will have its own advantages but will have its own limitations also similarly a wire mesh will have its advantages but may have the limitations also now depending upon the kind of environment that we are offering to our workers we also need to design the material or select the material as per the working environment so there can be number of examples where leather is not advisable so you need to go for a wire mesh type in many cases a cushion may be advisable for example in most of the cinema halls when we go to watch a movie we will get the seats with cushion in those cases or in most of the cinema halls now this is again i have uh, already told in the previous slide that we will further see the important uh, parameter of seat depth the seat depth the the front edge should be rounded and padded a waterfall edge this is a it is given the front edge the front edge must be rounded and padded so let us see regarding seat depth what are the important parameter the one guideline is already given regarding the front edge it must be rounded and padded now seat depth it is measured from the front edge of the seat to the lumbar support region of the backrest so this is the giving us an example of the uh, sorry the definition of the seat depth how we will call it as a or what is basically the seat depth if the seat depth is excessive small people will not be able to sit back far enough to get the benefit of the backrest so this we can see we can easily experience what is written here so it is not something which we need to understand we can experience that if the seat depth is excessive excessive from here to the last part this is white portion is giving the indication of seat depth from the beginning to the end so when the seat depth is large or it is excessive small people will not be able to sit back far enough to get the benefit of the backrest so they may not be able to touch so or you can imagine a child sitting on a chair his back may not be touching to touching the backrest a seat width this is a width 70 to 20 inches suffices for most people and should be deep enough to permit the back to contact the lumbar backrest without cutting into the backs of the knees so they, these are the important guidelines maybe and this may also vary based on the anthropometric data for different regions but this is based on the design for average so whatever we are saying if you see is uh, suffices for most people so this is designing for the average people so in many cases if their anthropometric data suggests otherwise this the value of the seat depth and the other parameter we have seen is the width have to be changed accordingly or the para or the values may change for the seat depth and the width so width also is given a range and similarly the range is given for the seat depth also bucket type seats must be avoided cause a problem in the back the seat should swivel easily so swiveling of seat is important and we must ensure that we can swivel the seat minimum width of 450 millimeter is required so we can see that the width is also specified so the minimum value is given uh, 450 millimeter so this slide is giving us an idea that we must design for the average people the seat depth and the seat width so that it becomes comfortable for a person to be seated on the ergonomically desired designed chair now seat slope this is a slope we can see seat slope provision of forward slope of the seat up to a maximum of 10 degrees is useful to reduce the pressure on the thighs when working while leaning forward so when we are working on a system sitting on a chair so there may be pressure points under the thighs so those pressure points has to be avoided and for that reason a slope of 10 degree can be given or a maximum of 10 degree slope can be given on the seat but for general purpose a chair with the seat angle fixed and horizontal is probably best so in many cases as i have already told depending upon the requirement the kind of work being done by the operator we can design the chair or we can customize the chair as per the requirement so in many cases we may design a chair with a seat angle fixed 
and horizontal is probably the best. So, we can always keep the seat horizontal also instead of giving it an angle of 10 degrees. The seat slant should be adjustable. So, this slant should also or the angle should be adjustable between 0 to 10 degrees. Now, headrest what is the purpose? The purpose is to provide comfort and safety. Headrest must be height adjustable, cushioned for comfort. So, it must have a cushioning effect here, must have a cushion and it must be adjustable as per the height of the person. Relaxed posture that helps to relieve the pressure on your postural muscles which can decrease fatigue and increase comfort and sometimes while stretching we can place the head on the headrest and relax for some time because we have already seen that a person changes lot of postures or seating postures in an hour. So, if we multiply it by 8 hours we can see that the person may have to relax also. So, headrest will definitely reduce the fatigue. Now, this is a backrest which is also very very important. The backrest, backrest must be large enough to cover the entire width of the back, a minimum of 12 inches is recommended for width. So, 12 inches is recommended minimum that is a minimum value. Backrest seat pan angle, the angle between the seat pan and chair back should be adjustable when the user is seated with thighs parallel to the floor and legs properly supported vertically. So, we can say that the angle must be adjustable, we must give uh, the flexibility. This angle permits the user to sit slightly forward, straight up or recline back depending on the type of compute, computing performed, support needed and comfort desired. So, depending upon the comfort desired or the support required for the back, this must help the operator to fix up the angle as per his requirement. If he wants to sit slightly forward, he must be able to do it. If he want to sit straight up, must be possible. If he want to recline back, that must also be possible. So, back rest is important. Foot rest, foot rest must be adjustable, does not restrict the leg movement easily they must be removed if you do not want to use the footrest as wide as your hips large enough for the soles of both feet has a non skid surface made of anti skidding material anti fatigue material. So, this is one example of the footrest which is given here and this can be integrated with the design of the chair also. Then we can have a armrest, armrest users report enhanced performance including less fatigue, increased comfort and better endurance with sustained computing. So, you can see the advantages of using a armrest, less fatigue, increased comfort, better endurance with sustained computing. So, continuously persistently the person can work without when if he the uh, adequate armrests are provided. Armrest should be placed at least 18.5 inches apart and made of soft and padded material. So, just a uh, general guideline is given between the distance armrest should be placed at least 18.5 inches apart. And obviously, they must be soft because they have to support the arms and are made by the padded material. An ergonomically designed armrest should be adjustable vertically and not impair circulation due to direct pressure to contact areas, but distribute that load over the broad areas comfortably. So, we must have or must follow these guidelines. So, they should be adjustable vertically and not impair circulation due to direct pressure to contact areas but distribute that load over the broad areas comfort comfortably. So, the load must be distributed to the broad areas. So, it must not be a uh, at a point that a load is acting as we have seen the pressure points under the thigh. So, that those points must be avoided and the load must be distributed over the wide area. So, maybe with the arm if I am placing my hand on the armrest like this, so the load must be distributed over a wide range of area. So, the base an ergonomically designed chair has a solid safe and stable 5 post chair base. It should be made of strong materials to support up to 5 times the body weight. So, this is important it must be able to support up to, up to 5 times the body weight and this is a very very general statement strong materials. So, what are strong materials? We must know. So, it can be made up of metals, there are different types of metals which can easily be casted or forged into these 
uh, type of shapes or it can be even made up of some plastics. So, some plastics may be usually we use thermosets uh, thermoplastics in this case. So, they can be made in plastic or it can be made in a combination of uh, metal and a plastic there can be a strong metallic core inside then it is covered by a plastic outside or encapsulated in a plastic. The chair base should also be equipped with quality casters to easily or to permit easy maneuvering on office floor surfaces. So, the casters is given here. So, we may have uh, flexibility of using the casters also, so that you can maneuver the chair from one place to another place easily. Now, this is a final design or the 3D view. So, we can say that the base has to be designed adjustable knobs, seat depth, seat slope, seat material, headrest, backrest, armrest, footrest. So, if we take into account all these components of a chair and design them properly keeping in mind the standard guidelines as per the anthropometric data for a particular geographical region of the world. I think the chair that will be designed keeping in mind all these parameters will be ergonomically designed as well as it will provide comfortable working environment or working conditions for the worker. So, with this we conclude the today's session and in next session we will try to take another case study in which some important part or some important man machine interaction will be discussed and highlighted and we will try to see that how uh, ergonomic design can help in improving the productivity of the system. Thank you.